everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'll be working on two of my American elms. These are kind of pre-bonsai. They were grown from a seed in the front garden, dug up, and I've been slowly working on them to improve the looks of them over the last few years. I've got a total of three American elm bonsais. This is my largest one and I pruned that one up and cleaned it up in a previous video. I have a playlist for my American Elm Bonsai and I'll put that link in the description below. Here's a look at my largest American Elm. So you can see the giant canopy I'm developing on the top of the tree which is typical of the American Elm. So I'll show you a few pictures. My original plan was to plant all three of these elms in a forest together, but I'm rethinking that. Uh, I'm trying to develop that giant umbrella shaped crown on top of my American elms. And I think once each tree has that crown, they'll just be huge and it wouldn't suit a forest planting. It'd have to be a really, really large pot and I don't think it would be very manageable. So I'm thinking develop all the three trees separately, trying to get that typical American elm structure to the branches and the canopy. In the last video of my giant American elm here, I cleaned up the branch structure, getting that kind of broom style canopy. And I also scrubbed all the bark. It was getting really thick with lichen. And I think I'll have to do that on the other two trees also. Here's a look at the lichen buildup on my medium size elm. And you can see as it gets thicker and thicker, it obscures the bark texture. It starts growing on the branches and it could, you know, cover up some of the buds and possibly prevent them from emerging. I'm going to start today by pruning back my medium sized American elm. You can see the canopy here. Most of the branches in the upper canopy are quite slim. You know, it's got a fairly thick trunk. Then it comes up to all kind of thin branches. So. I've got to build those up and uh, it'll just be a matter of, you know, letting the tree grow all summer, every winter pruning it back, letting it grow again the next summer, pruning it back. And eventually this upper structure will thicken up and blend in nicely with the trunk. On my American Elm, I'm after a smooth flowing structure. So everything coming up, fanning out. Some say the shape of an American Elm should look like a a wine glass or a martini glass. So a thin kind of stem coming up and then fanning outwards into a rounded type canopy shape. I'm going to begin the pruning now. So I've got to look at the trunk. It comes up and then at this point I've got a branch that it's maybe a little too horizontal but it's all I have there. And then I've got one that comes up here that was cut off and it's starting to fan outwards. There's another one here that kind of fans outwards. So I think it's getting a little tall. So I'm going to have to reduce it. I could, there's a branch fanning out up here, but that would make it too tall. So I think I'm going to have to take it back to this junction here. So here I go. like that. So that leaves me with this branch and this one. So it comes up from one divides into two. This one is kind of going to the left hand side too much. It crosses the whole front of the tree. So that's coming off. I've got one up here that's too vertical. So I'm going to take that off like that. Reduce this back and I'm looking for buds. So here and back to here. 
reducing everything back to there. So that's got that branch quite compact and reduced in height. It's looking quite nice. So then I'm going to follow, there's a branch coming off of it here. And again, it's kind of fanning outwards. I can take, there's a dead bit here. I'll take that out like that. I'll reduce this top bit, reduce this. And I will take back that branch to there and this one to here. These branches are a little funny. They kind of droop down, but I'm going to leave that for now. So I'm going to try this branch now, this kind of two horizontal branch. So I'll take it back. I'll look for an upward facing bud here, prune it back, take this vertical part off the branch here, trim that back my stub off here. There's one growing on the inside. I can prune off there and I'll shorten that one. That's got this part of the branch pruned up. Now up front here I've got a stub here I can remove. It's quite lichen covered. Um, I'll reduce this. There's one growing up here. Definitely don't want that. I think going to have to take that whole bit off so I will like that just wasn't growing a nice direction I've got two branches here so I can reduce the length of this branch back to here shorten this one to here take the upwards growth off just clean that up a bit more like that and that that branch is looking quite nice I've got a branch coming out here quite heavily covered in lichen. I hope it's still alive. It looks like it is. That'll need some cleanup. I think that branch is okay. I'll maybe just take the bottom part of it off and just develop this upper part here. Yeah. Because this, this part is interfering with this branch and it divides too early on the branch. So that comes off. I don't even know if that was alive. I hope this branch is alive. If it's not, well, it's not. There's one that kind of fans out here. I'll just prune the tip off. There's one kind of coming up here. I'll prune that one back. I think the tip on this one is dead back to here, so I'll prune it back like that. Reduce this one. Reduce this one. Back to there, take my stub off, cleaning that branch up a bit. There's one shooting up here. I'm looking for buds on it. There's one over here, one down here. I think I've got to take it off fairly short to here, developing this bud. There's one that comes up quite high here. Um, it's getting quite high. I could prune it here and here. This is all covered in lichen. That would need some cleanup for buds to develop in that area. Uh, I'm going to prune it off here, see how it looks. Like that, prune this up, prune this back, and prune this back. Yeah. Yeah, not the greatest branch, but hopefully once I clean this up, maybe something will develop lower down and I can prune this upper portion off. This branch coming up the side here, I'll take the top off here, the top off here, prune these branches back. There's one growing back in towards the interior here. I'll get rid of that. And then there's one growing from the base down here. It is a fairly good radial direction, so I'm going to just prune the tip off. Maybe let that develop. It might be a future branch that'll be quite nice. Now, we're getting down. That's got the upper canopy pruned. There's a branch down here.
the trunk comes up and there's kind of a bulgy section here and a branch coming out. So I've got to do something with that. There's a look at this section. So the trunk comes up and then it kind of bulges out. So I would either have to like remove that entire bulgy section or I'm, my plan is to develop an upright trunk. So maybe someday this all kinds of kind of blends in. So that's, that's been my objective is to develop that upright trunk. So this one, there's a very strong branch here. I'm going to prune it back. I'm looking for some outward facing buds. They seem to be either side of the branch. So I think I'm going to take it back to, to here. I've got all these multiple branches coming out from this spot on the tree. I've got to decide, do I want to prune them off or do I want to develop them? I have a large pruning scar in the back of this tree. You can see where it was chopped from a, you know, quite a tall tree down to a shorter tree. So yeah, I've got to decide, do I want to keep those? Let me have a look at it. I think the answer is no. I think all these branches, except for the upright one here, need to be pruned off so I can develop this one and someday hopefully it'll blend in. All these small branches are doing here are just making that bulge even worse. So they're all coming off. They don't flow with the, you know, they don't flow with the tree at all. So that comes off. So now my flow line is coming up to this branch is the one I'll develop. The one out here, I don't think I want it either. It's opposite this branch. I, I just don't think I want it. I'm going to prune it away like that. So all my flow comes up this way. I think that looks better. So there's one last branch to prune this long one out to the side here. I'm going to prune it back to here. And that is it. I'll spin the tree around now so you can see it from all views. So, you know, somewhere around here is probably the front. So I'll rotate it around to the right hand side. Out there. Coming around to probably the back. You can see there's another really large branch I had to take off here. to the left side and back to somewhere around the front. These elms, if they're in the ground, they grow incredibly fast. Like you can get a branch like this will thicken up to about that size in a single summer. They just grow incredibly well in the ground. In a pot, they definitely slow down. You get a finer branch structure. I think if you are developing an American elm bonsai, if you put it in the ground, I think the growth is too fast. It's too rapid and coarse. So I think a training box would be better for the American elms. That way you can kind of control the growth a little more. They don't grow quite so large. Like this, this tree, it'll grow like twice my height in one summer. They just shoot up and they just keep on growing. You prune them back and they just shoot up again. It's amazing how fast they grow in the ground. In a pot, they definitely slow down and you can control them more. I'll put the medium one aside and then I'll clean up the lichen on both trees at the end. So let's get out my smallest American elm and get that pruned up also. Here's a look at the smallest of my American elm bonsai. This one too has a horrible pruning scar in the back. I'll rotate it around so you can see that. So you can see it's been cut off here and it's kind of died back down the trunk a bit. So. It might be just a case of letting the tree grow and slowly heal that wound up. Here's a look at that large wound at the back where the trunk was pruned off here and this is the new leader. The trunk kind of died back. I'll have to peel some of this bark off and just see where the living tissue starts at the back there. Now let me just see if I can find the living part of the tree. Yeah. Yeah, that's the living part. So that's as far as the deadwood goes down to here. 
not very attractive on the tree. All right, I'll, I'll get the upper canopy pruned up. So first thing I notice, I'll come to this branch out the back here. There's a branch shooting straight up here. I'll get rid of that. Again, I want everything flowing upwards. This branch here, it comes up and it divides here and here. I could prune it off here, but this branch isn't going a very good direction. So I think I'm going to take it off and just make this the branch leader here, taking that whole top off. That way you get a nicer flow direction. The one coming out the front here, it's not good at all either. So I'm taking that right out and this one. They just don't flow at all. I've got one here too. This is kind of my upright trunk leader here for the tree. And then I got a horizontal one that doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to take that right out like that. So I'm following this up. It divides into two here, which is good. And then I've got one kind of doesn't flow either. Oh, I've got a scale insect on there. Let me show you that. So right here on the tree, there's a, a scale blister. And if I peel it off, usually you get like a cottony. Wait, oh, it just popped off. You can see where they were eating the bark or the tree underneath that blister. All right, and I'm continuing with the pruning of the tree. So I've got a branch coming off here that's kind of horizontal. It doesn't flow upwards, and that's what I'm after is upwards flow, so that comes off. This one flows upwards nicely. It comes up. This one flows up not too bad, so I'll prune it back. I'll prune this one back to there. I'll take the one branch going up the inside off here. Clean up that stub. So this one comes up and then this branch does kind of a funny thing. This is a nice radial direction and then it kind of crosses over here. I want to develop this part, get rid of all this, which isn't growing a good direction. So off it comes like that. That really fixes this branch up nicely, gets it more compact too. So I'm following this side up now. And again, there's one kind of coming out horizontal here. It doesn't flow at all. It eventually starts going upright, but if I develop it up higher, the tree's starting to get a bit tall then. I'll take the stub out the middle here, like that. Um, to keep this or not, I don't know. Yeah, I've got to decide if I want to keep that. And I'm thinking no, so I'm going to get rid of it. If in doubt, cut it out. <laughs> That's the saying. I'm going to reduce the top here. I'm going to reduce this one. I'm going to reduce this branch. And I'm going to take... No, I'm going to leave that one. Do I want it? No, I don't want it. I'm going to take that middle section out here so it divides from one into two. So off comes that middle section like that. And I think that is pruned up as, as good as this tree gets. So here's a look at the smallest American elm all pruned up for today. It's not the most attractive tree in the world, but you know, maybe after many, many years, it'll start thickening up and roll over and this will look like a natural feature. Maybe, you know, there was a big branch or trunk here that split, got hit by lightning and died off or something like that. You know, it should look more natural as the tree gets older. Both trees are pruned up for today. So the next thing I'll do is I'll clean all the lichen off the trunk and branches of the trees. All right, I'm ready to begin getting the lichen off. I just put some water in this bottle here. Like that, and then I've got a toothbrush. I can dip in here and then start scrubbing. 
Now this lichen is quite dry because it's been in the greenhouse here. So it might take a little bit of a soaking before it loosens up and starts to come off. The lichen also obscures the sun hitting your bark. So your bark, you can see how it's a reddish color. If the sun were hitting the bark, it would be more of a gray color. It kind of bleaches the outer layer of bark. So yeah, your lichen is kind of like UV protection on the bark and it it's okay, it's just, you know, you'll want to see the bark on the tree, not lichen. A little bit of lichen's okay, but too much, it just obscures the whole bark texture. I can also scrub off that moss that's growing around the base of the tree, kind of obscuring the surface roots. I'll have to get the tweezers and pick that away also. I'll work away at scrubbing away all that lichen and then we'll come back and have a final look at the two trees. I have got the medium-sized American elm all cleaned up of its lichen so it looks quite different. That's the back of it. Yeah, you can see the kind of texture on the bark now. There were a lot of buds on some of these branches that were covered up with lichen. They would have never developed with that lichen over top of them. So I, I scrubbed them all clean, all the branches clean, exposing a lot of buds. So that's really cool. Um, so I think it's just ready for spring now. All right, I'll put this one back on the bench and I'll clean up the third and smallest American elm. Okay, kind of get it soaked down. This one doesn't have as much lichen on it. The other one was quite heavily covered. It took quite a while to scrub it all off. It really helps to pre-soak the lichen too. It softens it up and it comes off really easily then. Here's a look at the smallest American elm all cleaned up of its lichen. Yeah, looking good, ready to grow. I'll show you that, like the bark color of this compared to my largest one over here, which you can see I also scrubbed all the lichen off of it, but it's, uh, you know, being air dried and bleached by the sun a little more. Let me see if I can get you in there a little closer. Yeah, so it's quite a bit brighter, brighter looking. It may not look that bright in this light, but it is. It's like a light gray color. Looks quite nice. It was a nice day working out here in the greenhouse on my two American elms. They're all cleaned up and ready for spring, ready to grow. So I'm looking forward to the upcoming season, the growing season, seeing my trees develop just a little bit further. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>